everyone, Squee here, and welcome to my Q&A extravaganza. So, I am um, playing Sniper Elite version 2. It's a game I've played quite a bit uh, on my own spare time. Not a game I've LP, don't know if I ever will LP it, but uh, I thought it would be a fun to try and do this while answering questions, because it's a difficult game. Uh, and uh, I enjoy challenging myself while trying to answer questions because I like punishment. Um, and I thought about doing like crazy pictures and whatnot, but there's just too many questions. It would take way too long and it would take a month to get this out. So I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to play this while answering your questions. So a few quick rules to your questions. One, I have taken all of your questions and put them into a Word document. So I've read over all of the questions. Um, I have deleted as many of the repeat questions as I could, meaning that you may have asked a question, and if I didn't answer it, it's probably because someone else asked the question first, um, or I at least wrote it down first and I copied it first. So uh, I try not to do repeats. Uh, there'll probably be a couple that I missed, and I'll just say, nope, already answered that, we'll move on, just for the sake of time. So it's not like I'm snubbing you, it's just there's no point in answering the same question twice. There are a few other questions that I deleted, uh, actually, no, I don't think there are. I, oops, what did I, what? That's not what I meant to do. I literally did, clicked a button, didn't intend to. This one will work. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> I, I like that outcome, that was a good outcome. That was, that was what we call a nut shot. What? Oh, he ducked right at the right moment. There we go. Um, anyway. So, uh... <laughs> Sorry, what was I talking about? Yes, so, um, yeah, if, if you don't see your question here, I, I either I, I answered it in a comment or it was just a, uh, a repeat question. Oh, come on. Get out here. What? There. I don't claim to be the best at this game, especially when concentrating on other stuff. Um, so yes, also, if you asked a ton of questions, I might spend less time on each of your questions. That's kind of the payoff there. Come on, show your face again. What the? So, um, so that's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna try and play this game. As bad as I am at these games, um, I'm going to try and play this game while answering your questions. Stop it. Stop moving. Stop. Stop moving. Stop moving. Show your face. There we go. Uh, yeah, so, sorry. It's so hard to concentrate. There we go. Um, so, let's just get into it, right? Shall we? Uh, if there's a question that I'm like, I'm not willing to answer that question, I will say so, but I think I would have erased that if that were the case, so. For the most part, let's get started. So, um, I will start by your name and then your question or questions, and I'll take them one at a time. Uh, so, Harry Turner uh, asked, what were you saying about broken feet? Uh, I guess I said something about my broken feet. So, the only time I've ever broken a bone in my life was both of my feet at the exact same time. Um, and that was during my last road march for basic training. Road marches are very, very long walks with extreme amounts of weight and gear on you. And it's supposed to simulate you traveling long distances in the military. Um, the last thing you have to do in basic training is a 25, well, at least in infantry basic training, is a 25 mile road march, uh, that they call an FTX. Uh, and during that road march, you have to do a whole bunch of skills and, and little tiny missions and stuff. It's, it's basically, it's supposed to be a culmination of all of your training up until this point. And, uh, during mine, I broke both of my feet at the same time. Not quite sure how that happened. The doctors are under the impression that uh, I broke one with a stress fracture. I had stress fractures on both my feet, which is not uncommon. Um, a lot of people get stress fractures, especially in basic training. And then for whatever reason, I stepped wrong or something and I broke my left, the second motor tarsal on my left foot. Uh, snapped it clean through. 
And uh, that hurt so bad, and I had to keep walking, that uh, I transferred all my weight over to my right foot, which caused the second metatarsal on my right foot to also break all the way through. Uh, not quite as badly as my left foot, though, but still, it was, it was, it was a fracture. Um, and uh, to my credit, I did not know that they were broken. If I had known they were broken, I probably would have stopped, but all I know is that they hurt like mad. Um, so, and, and it was the last, uh, it was the last thing I had to do to complete basic training. In other words, once I finish this FTX, we're, we're done for the most part. You, you, uh, clean your weapons a little bit and then you, oh, hang on, I gotta go this way. Um, and then you just wait for a week to go home. Uh, so I figured this was the last thing I needed to do. I was going to finish it because if I didn't finish it, I'd have to get recycled through my training again. And I didn't want that. For the love of God, I did not want to stay there longer than I had to. Um, so I continued to march and I ended up walking seven miles on two broken feet. There we go. Uh, come here. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, no. I died already. So I walked seven miles on two broken feet. And, um, it was pretty much one of the hardest things I've had to do in my life. Not the hardest, but it was pretty bad. Um, so, yeah, there's that story. Uh, it was funny, too, because uh, the drill sergeants thought I was lying or faking it. Because the next morning, instead of going to the doctor, I went to what we call Warrior's Breakfast, which is kind of your celebration for beating basic training. You get a good breakfast and watch a movie, and you get to wear your new spiffy exercise uniform that you couldn't wear until you had completed basic. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to do all that. I didn't want to go to the doctor. And because in basic training, you have to... Uh, go to the doctor in the morning. They have they call, what they call sick call, and if you miss sick call, you have to wait till the next day. So I said, screw it, I'm gonna wait till the next day, I'm not missing this. And so all the drill sergeants were like, if he really broke his feet, he would have gone to sick call. <laughs> so they thought I was just faking it. And then I came the next day after sick call with the cast on both feet, and they were like, damn, faking? So, yeah, it was good times. On to the next question! Uh, let's see. Tarek371 asks, my question is when I plan on asking every Let's Player which I watch on YouTube. If the Galactic Empire circa episode 5 invaded Earth and you were put in charge of the Earth's forces, what would be your battle plan? Okay, well, quick question for you. First, do we have allies? Is it like status quo, like Earth as it is now, all of a sudden Empire shows up and invades? I'm going to assume that's the case. And if that is the case, then I am going to capitulate as fast as possible. Which means I am going to surrender like you would not believe. Why? Because we wouldn't stand a chance. We wouldn't stand a snowball's chance in hell. And I'd like to save as many lives as humanly possible. A lot of people would be like, that's the coward's way out. But dude, it's the flippin' empire. They have entire worlds of armies at their disposal. They are incredibly powerful and innumerably uh, strong. Not to mention that they have the ability to destroy planets. There is nothing, nothing we as a single solitary planet could do to stop them. Maybe we could hold out for a few days, maybe a month, hell, maybe even a year. But during that time, our populace is going to be ravaged, and sooner or later, they are going to destroy us. So, in order to prevent that from happening, it is far better to capitulate, accept their rule, and yes, you'll live under a repressive regime, but overall, more people will survive. Now, if we have other allies, I don't know, form a resistance, and worry about it then, I need more information. But I think the answer to your question was, I would probably capitulate and say, I for one welcome our new overlords, ha <laughs> ha, until the Rebel Alliance contacts us. Uh, so, none of your business asks a few questions. One, would you rather change gender every time you sneeze or be able to tell a difference, or not be, be able to tell a difference between a muffin and a baby? Well, that's a good question. 
Can I tell the difference between everything else? I just don't have the different. I don't. I just can't tell the difference between a muffin and a baby. Because if that's the case, then I'll just uh, take the not be a muffin or a baby rather than switching gender roles every time I sneeze. Because then I will just assume that every muffin is a baby just to be on the safe side and we'll be fine. It might give me a few embarrassing moments at the marketplace. But other than that, I think I'd live an okay life. Uh, question two. What is your best YouTuber Let's Player moment? Um... I think it happened just recently, actually. In one of my Skyrim episodes. Um... Oh, uh, missed. There we go. Oh, one of our my Skyrim episodes, I was attacked by bears. At the same time, I was attacked by a dragon. At the same time, a guy ran up to me and handed me something and said, Don't lose it or I'll kill you. And then ran away. And then I was continuously being attacked by these bears and this dragon. And then spiders came up and attacked me. And then during all this, someone else ran up and asked if I'd seen someone else run up and hand me something. And while he was asking me this, the bears killed him. And then the dragon bit my corpse and threw me and I face planted into a rock. It was pretty spectacular, honestly. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty hilarious. Uh, there could have been a better moment than that. I'm just not thinking of it right now. Of course, that is recent, so. Come here. Wappo! Hello. Let's see if we can get you without it. Oh, through the eye! Love my job. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Number three from None of Your Business. What made you so interested in history? Not really sure. I mean, my interest in history has always been there, so it's kind of hard to point to this is this is what caused me to love history. I, I've loved history ever since I was a small child. Eisenberg was dead. I was committed now. Both the Russians and Germans would know I was in play. Four to go. I just find the story of how we got to where we are today fascinating. I'm not sure exactly. There was no one thing that made me fascinated by it. So, I think I did okay. Scope shot accuracy, 77. Got 12 headshots, two explosive kills. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, and Intel number four from none of your business. Oh, Gunter yes, Kreidel, okay. It's an fine. expert in rocket engines. Da, 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 da. Number four, do I know the Muffin Man? Yes, he lives on Dreary Lane. Um, and don't I have other weapons? Not that weapon, that weapon. There we go. What the heck? What the heck? There we go. <laughs> it was brilliant. Hang on. As soon as I am not about to die, I will answer the next question. I promise. There we go. Uh, Balamir Black asks, I'd like to know what god do you pray to, if any. A lot of people actually ask this question. Um, This is an... I had a difficult time with this question, not because I'm not sure where I stand, but um, I, for the longest time, avoided talking about religion and my views of religion uh, for one reason. Not that I, I am uh, embarrassed or ashamed or anything like that, but that um, religion is a, is a hot button issue. And my goal is to make as many uh, make videos that as many people as possible can enjoy. And the truth of the matter is, while it shouldn't be this way, religion is such a hot button issue that if I say any stance on religion, it's going to instantly be make a group of people who don't share my views not enjoy my videos as much or enjoy them less. Um, it shouldn't be that way, but it's the truth. So for the longest time, I never really talked about my religious views. But when, asked, but then again, I was never directly asked this question either, and I, I kind of draw a line. While I do want to make videos that the most amount of people can enjoy, I also don't want to be an enabler of such a dumb idea, and that really is a dumb idea that you are going to not enjoy my videos because and only because I don't share your religious views is stupid and immature, and I don't want to 
um, encourage such behavior. Most people, common decent people, can say, okay, we disagree on this, but I still like you as a person and I will still enjoy your videos and whatnot. And uh, so like I said, I don't want to be that one person that says it's okay to dislike what someone does just because they don't agree with you. Uh, so, that said, uh, I will briefly go into what my religious views are, and the truth is, I don't really have any. I'm not very religious. Um, I um, hesitate to say one thing or the other. I'm an atheist, I'm an agnostic, or whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I have never seen any um, evidence that shows that God does exist, and I am a very evidence-minded person. Uh, I believe in science wholeheartedly. I, I love science. I love astronomy. I love physics. I love all of it. And the truth is, there is no evidence in this world that proves the existence of God. And no, the fact that there are flowers and plants around is not evidence that there is God. It might suggest complexity, and thus maybe someone designed it, but it's not evidence in any way, shape, or form. Uh, in the the and if you think it is, then 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 you're just not using the definition of evidence correctly. Religion, by its very nature, is faith based. It's faith based because there is no evidence. If we had proof that God exists, it would no longer be faith based. Nicely done, me. Um, and like I said, I have seen no evidence to show to make me believe that there is a God uh, of any kind. Then again, I have never seen any evidence that disproves him either. So I would never say that he doesn't exist. I would simply say I don't know. And honestly, I don't really care. Um, that sounds kind of bad, but the truth of the matter is, is, is simple. I don't need religion to live a happy and fulfilled life. I see beauty and, and, and complexity every, everywhere I go, with or without some intelligent designer. I live my life by the morals I was raised by, which are the same morals that anyone was raised by. Um, and I don't need uh, the threat of, of a god or the guiding hand of a god, either way, to help me live a moral life. Um, and the, the, the biggest point of all is that Either one of two things are true, or one of three things are true. Either there is no God of any kind, and, you know, that's fine. You know, when I die, I'll die, and I won't really care. Uh, or there is a God, and he is a loving, benevolent God, or gods, or whatever. I, because, honestly, look, here, here's my view, and this is one thing. Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Wiccan, Nordic... I mean, there's no evidence to show that any one is any more real than any other one, so I would not give preference to any of them. Um, so, yeah, so either there is a benevolent God, and he will look at my life, and he will say, you lived a pretty happy life, you, you didn't really do anything horrible to other individuals, per se, and I think you lived a good life, and you're welcome into my kingdom, or whatnot. Or... I will die, I will go to heaven, there will be a god, and he will say, You lived a decent life, you were a good person, but you didn't play to my narcissistic ego, and you didn't really get baptized and bend knee to me and, and all that stuff, so I'm gonna send you to hell. And if that's the case, I think I'd rather go to hell, literally, because why would I want to live in a place with such a narcissistic being? So, there are my religious views, and the truth of the matter is, uh, it's not really vital to me. Now, that said, I'm not suggesting that it's not vital to other people. There are lots of people who find religion very, very helpful to them uh, and necessary in their daily life. And sometimes not necessary, but just wanted. And that's absolutely fine. I'm just not one of those people. Woohoo! And I am more than welcome to debate the issue with anyone who would like to in a PM, as long as you are respectful about it. I, as long as you are able to say that, uh, you know, we can agree, but we can agree, or we can disagree, but we can disagree civilly. As long as you can do that, I am more than happy to debate anything you want with you. Just don't turn it into, uh, you hate God, God hates you, whatever kind of thing, because that's not what it is at all. Ah. Oh, I hate him. What the? No! <laughs> Whoops. So, there's that one. Uh, shall we move on to a less heady question? Uh, cool engines. Okay. 
asked, what's up with the crabs? Oh, I already answered that in the Assassin's Creed Black Flag. But the short end of the story is that my sister and I went walking on a beach one night and uh, we took a flashlight with us and there were crabs everywhere that came out of these little holes. And we shined the flashlight at them and they bum rushed us because apparently they don't like that. So that's what's up with the crabs. Very impressive story, I know. Okay, get him. God, I love the kill shots in this game. No! Darn it! They move too much! I suck at this game! Uh, how old am I? I am 30 years of age. And what's my full name? Stephen Castle Fagan. Yes, my middle name is Castle and I'm quite fond of it. I love that name. Alright, hang on. Um, Lone Phoenix asks, my question for the Q&A, whatever happened to your obsession with peach tea? You haven't mentioned it in a while. Um... My obsession with peach tea just kind of subsided, honestly. Um, wasn't anything bad, per se, just kind of, uh, I drank a lot of peach tea and then I, uh, you know, started drinking other stuff. I still love peach tea, I still drink it all the time, just not as much as I used to. What? Who? There we go. Long shot! Um, so I still drink it a lot. I just don't drink it as much as I used to. I go through phases. I really do. When it comes to food and, um, drinks, I go through phases. I go through, oh my god, I can't get enough of this drink. And, and then after a month or so, I kind of move on to another type of drink or whatnot. Right now, my favorite is, uh, as much as it shouldn't be. Diet Dr. Pepper. Ah. Poop. They're gonna overrun me. This is not good. There we go. Oh, hey there! Oh, you're the one that's been killing me! There we go. Let's put a stop to that. Um, Mr. Crazy Idiot says, Hey, Squee, what's your opinion on the indoctrination theory for the ending of Mass Effect 3? It'd be neat if it was true, but it's not true. I don't care what you guys say. Or let me at least say, there is no evidence, nor will there ever be any evidence that indoctrination theory is anything more than just a fan belief. Because that's the truth. If there was, there was nothing more than circumstantial evidence in the game that kind of, sort of, maybe hints to this. The developers have never suggested that it was true in any way, shape, or form, nor do I think they ever will. And thus, it is merely merely a fan fiction. It would have been neat if it was true, though. Oops. Uh, what else we got? Big Squee asks, have you ever ch had a chance to change something YouTube-wise? What would it be? Um... Well, I would say a better method of marking content ID, but that's probably asking a bit too much, huh? How about a new method of tracking content ID? Because I'm not a big fan of the idea that, uh, is that everyone? Of the idea that if I accidentally have something in my videos, um, you know, a 30-minute video has a five-second clip of something that may or may not be copyrighted or whatnot, that they get all of the revenue of that video. I, I would be a much bigger fan of, uh, and I think Angry Joe said this once, of, you know what, give them a small percentage. Give them an appropriate percentage. That would be kind of cool. Um, but who knows? I mean, it's YouTube. YouTube's always had big problems. So, hang on a second. Let me uh, scroll down. 
Alright, uh, Squee, what was your first thought when you started Let's Playing? My first thought? Huh, that was a horrible take. Let's try and record that again. <laughs> that was my first thought. My first Let's Play video ever was the beginning of Mass Effect 2, and I recorded that intro, I think, five times. And it still sucked. But, you know, it was my first video, what do you want? But yeah, that was my first thought was, this was a horrible take. Let's try it again. Sorry if that's not exactly the most impressive uh, thought that you wanted, but hey, it's the truth. What else? Uh, care to give a teaser of what games you plan on LPing? No, not really. Because I have learned, and as most of you have learned, that uh, I, I tend to be very, very scatterbrained when it comes to what I LP and when. And it, when every time I give someone a promise, like, I'm going to start LPing this soon, Witcher, uh, I end up never LPing it. <laughs> Something else always catches my interest first, Witcher. Um, I plan, there are certain games I plan to do, like Witcher. Uh, I really do want to do the Witcher series. It's just like, it's the problem with the Witcher series is that it's such um, an intensive game that I hesitate to start it. You know? Because it's going to be a huge time sink because you got to do Witcher 1 and Witcher 2. But I do plan on doing it eventually. Uh, I want to do Batman Arkham Origins. Uh, I want to do Tomb Raider. There's a lot of games I want to play. But uh, so basically I've stopped giving you guys teasers on what I plan to LP because I don't know what I'm going to LP next. I kind of, whenever I'm done with one LP and I sit down to choose my next, it really does come down to what do I really want to play right now. So, yeah, there's that. Hello. Oh, gotcha. All right, what's next? Um, Cayman Rider Gumo said, on the whole, would you say that despite the extra work, despite the stress it can sometimes bring, Alpine has made your life better in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I think so. Um, set aside a moment the fact that it is my job, and thus my f source of income, and in that said way, it makes a huge difference and impact on my life. Set aside that for a second. Yes, knowing all of you has had a huge impact on my life. Oh, suck it, jabroni. Um, I feel like I have lots and lots and lots of friends now. I feel like I have... Um, if I have something bad happen to me, I don't do this very often, but if I feel like if I had something bad to me, I would have a hundred shoulders that I could cry on. A hundred people that would love to listen to my issues. I don't use that option because I don't really feel that's what I should be doing. But the fact that it's there, the fact that it's an option for me is a great, 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 great comfort. Especially for a guy who had trouble making friends growing up. And the idea that I have, you know, thousands of people that watch my stuff and enjoy what I do is, is life-changing. There's no other way to say it. So yes, yes, despite all the pains and problems it causes, um, it, it, it has been a life-changer. Let me kill this guy. And I'll read the next question. BAM! Didn't expect that, did ya? Where you going? 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 Stop it! Stop it! Told you to stop it. Alright, uh, next question. <sighs> Morgan Daniels 2. No, Morgan Daniels 
two weeks ago. Asked, um, during your service, did you ever get pulled into a war? Which years were you in service? Um, pulled into a war, not in the way you're thinking. I never went to a war zone. I never went to Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, I was pulled into the war efforts. Um, I had the joy and pleasure of joining the National Guard three months before, no, two months actually, before September 11th. So, yeah, that was fun. Um, I, I actually got stationed in a chemical weapons facility in uh, the US. I'm actually not sure I'm allowed to say where it is exactly. Um, yeah, I probably could without getting in trouble, but let's just play on the safe side here. Um, but anyway, there was a chemical weapons facility up in the uh, northwest of, of America. It was actually dismantling chemical weapons, and it had pretty much every weapon known to man. Uh, it had VX gas, sarin gas, mustard gas, it had it all, and it was dismantling them. And there was a fear that, uh, you know, after September 11th, there was a huge fear there would be another terrorist attack on America. And this was a high-value target because if they wanted to attack again, uh, attacking a chemical weapons plant would be ideal. So, I spent a year uh, at this chemical weapons plant in America uh, in a wooden box with more guns and ammo than a small army needed, uh, watching antelope frolic and play, uh, and taking it very seriously because there was a high potential that it could be a target for some terrorist attack. So, that was fun. Uh, I also spent a lot of time in Germany training soldiers to go to Iraq. Uh, it was kind of fun. I got to play the bad guys. I got to play Op 4. But I never actually went to a combat zone myself. The only time I was ever actually shot at and in mortal danger was, believe it or not, here in America from Americans after Hurricane Katrina. We went down to uh, Hurricane uh, to New Orleans to give aid. And after, right after the hurricane, that city was in chaos. It was really, really, really bad. And there were a lot of lawless areas and people that were scared. And, you know, some people took shots at us. So that was my, uh, my great war story. Oh, I'm supposed to plant it there. Whoops. Whoops. Ah. Hi. Get out of here. All right. Um. So yeah, where am I? Uh. Dial oh, and what years did I, were I, was I in service? Um, I was in service for six years for the National Guard, two of which were active. Um, which was from 2001 to 2007, I think? Maybe 2002 to 2008, I, I don't remember, but somewhere around there. Uh, Dylan Casey says, why are you so awesome? It's the shoes. It's totally the shoes and what made you start YouTube I started YouTube holy crap I have got to contact my lawyers they owe me a lot of back pay um, no uh, the to answer the actual question what made me start posting things on YouTube I watched several L peers including very and Togoff and and uh, Nakatelli and enjoyed what they did and thought that maybe I could do it too and so I tried that was it. That was pure and simple. That was it. I said, this seems like so much fun. I wonder if I could do it. I bet I could be somewhat funny, and I think it would be a fun hobby. And so, that's what I did. Now what? What am I doing? Am I shooting it? What am I supposed to do now? What's my objective? Am I searching this corpse? I'll search this corpse. I did it. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Plant charges on convoy's route. Yeah. Some place here I'm supposed to plant charges? Say what? Uh, 
Well, I'm lost. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There it is. Next. Okay, gotta get up there somehow. Okay, so the next question is... Do you and Kriana have characters other than Perrin and Eleanor? If so, have they ever tried playing the dark side, playing a dark side or neutral character? I am assuming you mean in Star Wars, uh, or Swator the Old Republic, because we have Captain Science and Lieutenant Logic, and you could almost call them dark side. Um, Kriana does have a few. I think she has a, a Imperial agent. Um, not sure what else she has. She has a Jedi Knight as well. I know her Jedi Knight is kind of neutral. Uh, I don't know what her agent is. I have my Imperial agent. Um, okay then. Um, who, who is also kind of neutral. Light side neutral, maybe? So, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Trey Cook. Here's my question. Have you always been a computer gamer? No, actually, I have not always been a computer gamer. I mean, I've always played computer games, but they haven't always been my mainstay. Um, I believe I started as a PC gamer yeah, way back it. when. Uh, PC games were the first games I used to play. Who shot at me? Ow. <sighs> I see you. Ah, uh ah, -uh. got you first. What? What? Oh God! <laughs> ah, shot him in the nuts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I started as a PC gamer, but no, I was heavily a console gamer during the PlayStation 2 era and PlayStation 1 era. Um, doing PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, during that whole era, I was heavily console and not much of a PC gamer. All the way up until when my 360 red ringed, you know, the red ring of death that the 360 was so prone to. Um, and after that, I just got a PC and went mostly PC. What am I doing now? Get to the vantage point, okay. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, all right. Next question. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Where's, 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 I don't, I don't have a mouse. Why don't I have a mouse? Where's my mouse? I have no mouse. What the hell? Ah! Why? Hang on. Where's my mouse? Seriously, I have no mouse. What the heck is going on here? Oh, there we go. Finally, I got a mouse. Weird. <laughs> All right, where are we? Um, Moon Mediant asks, what game would you say made you seriously consider start LPing? Um, Mass Effect 2? That's the first game I LP'd, and I think that was, uh, um, the first LP I ever saw was, uh, Dot Hack from Nakatelli and, uh, Thief from Variax, but I think it was Togoff's Mass Effect 2 Let's Play that made me really kind of want to start my own, so, that's, uh, probably it. Hang on, guys, my feetsies are cold, so I'm gonna put on some socksies. Alright, um... So yeah, uh, question number two from Moon Mediant. Do you have a game that changed your views and values on life or really made you see things in a completely new light? No, not as far as life lessons go. I don't think I've ever played a game that seriously uh, changed my view of the world around me. Um, or at least I'm not thinking of it. And if I'm not thinking of it, then I doubt it. Could have done it so because that's kind of one of those things that you're like yeah yeah um no not a game 
not a game. Uh, I've seen some games that were absolutely amazing, that I thought were beautiful, that, 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 that you know, but not one that changed my whole view of life, no. Uh, and question number three, do you see yourself doing LPs or other kind of content even if it no longer provides you financial support? Of course, of course. Uh, the financial support was merely a, a bonus, uh, an effect of, I mean, I was already doing LPs before, long before it made me any money and I will keep doing them long past the time they make me money if that ever happens. So, oh yeah. All right, what's going on here? What am I doing? What am I doing? Did it. Still not quite sure what I did, but I did it. Destroying the Nazi menace, yeah. <laughs> Ow. Got you. Oh, whoa, what happened? Ah! No fair! I call hacks! Hacks! Yeah! Oh, hello there. What the? There we go. Sorry, okay. Uh, sorry, question. <laughs> Next question. Uh, 34 Butterfingers. Squee, do you see the US's position as a world power crumbling anytime soon when compared to past powers like Rome and the Habsburg dynasty? Oh, uh, Habsburg dynasty. Blanking on that one at the moment. Look, I like history, but I'm not a history encyclopedia. Um, I can tell you about Rome, and no, I don't think it collapsed anytime soon uh, for two major reasons. One, at least not like Rome does. One, Rome had enemies knocking on its gates every day. And when I mean that, I mean people, serious contenders, literally pushing at their borders, trying to sack their land. Luckily, U.S. doesn't quite have anything like that. Um, and secondly, Rome had a huge problem with birth rates. In other words, uh, kind of the opposite of us. They couldn't have enough babies. They had trouble making babies. So they had trouble having the people they needed to defend their resources. And uh, we don't have that problem at all. <laughs> we do not have a population problem, at least not in the sense that Rome did. So no, I don't see us collapsing anytime soon like Rome. Does that mean we will, won't collapse soon? No, it just means we won't collapse soon like Rome. Then I'm also saying that we will collapse soon. I'm not saying, we're not exactly at our strongest at the moment, but I don't think America's gonna fall anytime soon. Oh, hello. Whoops. Ah. Come here. There we go. Trying to use it without the aim. Assist. Let's see here. Ah. Come here. Ah, lost sight of him. All right, all right, let's start using aim assist, huh? Oh 
Oh my god, is he okay? <laughs> uh, hello. Ah. Okay, way too high. Gotcha. Where are they firing at me from? Oh, hey, there's another one there. Oh! Seriously? Oh, hey, how did I miss you? Done. Next. Nice. Okay. Um, and the Habsburg Dynasty. I don't really remember much about the Habsburg Dynasty right now. I'd have to research that and get back to you. Uh, so, uh, Savulkin, Savulkin asks, To satisfy a personal curiosity, what makes you take the attitude towards role-playing characters that you do? How seriously do you treat it and respect the characters you create is... Oh, uh, wait. How seriously you treat it and respect the characters you create is really amazing and rare. Secondly... Okay, let's answer the first question first. Uh, what makes me take my attitude towards playing role-playing games? Way too big in an imagination as a child that never really went away as an adult. <laughs> I used to always imagine myself in all those fantasy stories I would read and watch in movies and all that stuff. And, um... When I see a role-playing game like Skyrim, some of that comes back to me, and I like to make characters and role-play them just because it's, it's it's more fun that way. To me, instead of metagaming everywhere, to try and actually live the life of a character is more entertaining and, and fun for me. Uh, and how do I go about making them? <sighs> I just kind of sit down and think what would be an interesting character to play. Um, what would be an interesting character to play that fits my play style, i.e. is not a douchebag. <laughs> um, and, and what kind of, can I give him some interesting flaws or something to work with? And uh, most importantly, is this a character I can relate to? Would I cheer on this character? Uh, that's a big thing for me. Uh, Hi. Whoops. Ah, missed again. Missed the third time. Good lord. How about you get down? What the? There we go. Gotta work on that aim. So, and how do I go about creating those characters? Yeah, that's just, I just, I just answered. Um... All right, Milis Petroza. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Zithian 2? Again, my mouse is gone. There we go. All right, Zithian 2. Uh, well, maybe it's just uh, Z Z Zith Zithian. Whatever. I'm sorry. Don't know how to pronounce your name correctly. So here's my question. Would you rather go pole dancing with Inferno, pilot a World War II airplane with Kriana, walk through Iraq barefooted with Piff, or make a silent film about Sir, Sir Stig's life with Variax? Well, as much as I would love to pilot a World War II plane, uh, Kriana and I would die. We would, we would die. Come on. This is us we're talking about. We would kill ourselves. So, how about not? <laughs> um... I don't want to work barefoot through Iraq with Piff. That sounds like a horrible idea. Uh, I like very Sir Stig, but I think it would be much more entertaining to go pole dancing with Inferno. So, there's your answer. Uh, Milius Petroza asks, My question is, during your studies, had you ever studied about the history of Southeast Asia? And if you had, what did you think about it? Not much. I don't know much about Southeast Asia. Um... My focus is generally uh, centered around the Middle East and Europe. Uh, I do know a lot about Korea, mainly because my fiance is from Korea and it piqued my interest. I know a little bit about China and Japan, um, but the but the areas in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, and, and the like, I don't know that much about. I'm sorry, I uh, sadly there is way too much history for one person to to learn it all. So. 
I probably will someday, but as of now, I don't know a, a, an amazing deal about that area. So, Sati. Alright, um... Hang on. Gotta scroll down again. Random 2! No, I think it's just random. Because I keep... A lot of these qu names have twos after them because it says it was posted two days ago or whatnot. And I didn't erase the two. So, Random asks... In an, an old episode a few years back, I think it was DayZ or Kriana's channel, you mentioned you don't like syringes. If I remember rightly, you were going to tell a story about it, but you never got to it. Okay. Well, first of all, it's not syringes. It's um, needles that I have a uh, Now I knew where the V2 production of. facility was. I figured I was in the home street. Good for you. Um, I have a fear of needles. And I wouldn't say a phobia, per se. I don't faint and freak out, but... I am really, really uncomfortable around needles. I, I, there are a few things in this world I hate more. Um, and I used to not have a big problem with needles, but... In the military, uh, I was trained as a combat lifesaver. Which is basically one step below a medic. Uh, it, it, it's training in how to treat serious battlefield wounds and injuries and uh, apply basic first aid to cuts, bruises, and all the like. Um, it was an intensive course. And uh, during said course, we had to learn how to give people IVs. And of course, we practiced on each other. Um, and, uh, of course, practicing on each other would, would be all fine and dandy, except the guy that I was paired up with was huge and had fingers like sausages and was not exactly the most dexterous of people. Um, and he was horrible at it. Let's see here. Can we find people to shoot? We can find people to shoot. So, I'm guessing he's not going to be much of a talker anymore. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yes, needles, guy. So he, he, he tried to give me an IV and he dug the needle into me and here's what he did that you're not supposed to do. If you miss the vein, if you stick the needle in someone and you miss the vein, it rolls off of it or whatnot, you pull out and try again. What he did is he left the needle in and started fishing for the vein. So moving it around inside my flesh. Not fun. Um, and then he finally did get the vein and then he didn't apply the proper pressure when he pulled the uh, needle out to stick the catheter in. And uh, I literally had a fountain of blood spurt. You know, you, you've seen like in movies or whatnot, uh, if someone like cuts an artery, you see whoosh, fountains of blood. Well, if you stick a needle in a vein and you don't apply pressure, it's not quite as bad as you see in the movies, but you do see a fountain of blood. And I did. And I was just like, oh my god, dude, put some pressure on. He was horrible. And that whole experience made me adapt or, or made me develop a fear of needles. I just, I have one. I have a fear of needles. It was bad. It is still is bad. I will put it this way. My, my my girl went through nursing school and um, I put her helped put her through nursing school and as a nurse obviously she had to get very good at using IVs and uh, she had to practice a lot and because I love her dearly I let her do it to me twice but only twice so and I would do anything for that girl so that shows you how much I dislike needles um And I think both times was because I did something and I was in trouble and it was the best way to get her to not be angry anymore. <laughs> um, because she knew how much I disliked it. So yeah, uh, next question. Uh, from Ryan Roganus. Hey Squee, what kind of game genre series do you like to play on your own time and why? Well, the truth is I don't play that many games on my own time. Usually if I'm playing a game, I'm recording it. Um, 
for a let's play or for something else. So it's a hard question to answer. I guess this is one because I've played this game before but never really recorded it. Um, I enjoy all kinds of games. Um, I think that my favorite type of games are just with good stories. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a particular genre. It doesn't have to be fantasy, science fiction, espionage, whatever. It just has to have a really good story. Um, or conversely, be open world enough that I can really enjoy and role play my character and all that. Um, but the truth of the matter is when I'm not recording, games like this are kind of what I play. Games that are fun and entertaining, but probably not fun enough or entertaining enough for me to do a full let's play on it. So yeah, there's that. I, uh, the Dragon Rune asked, have you thought of getting your fiance to be a part of your videos? Yes, and uh, that, that should be a dream that you should just forgo because it's not going to happen. She was actually part of one video once, and it was like some weird bear drive thing. I, I don't know where the, uh, the, the video is, but you could probably hunt it if you hunt through all my videos. But she is not a fan of being in front of a microphone or a camera, period. Um, so I would give up hopes of that. Come on. I messed it up! All right, I'm just gonna restart that. So, um, Kona Boda asks a twofold question. If you could turn into any animal uh, to say or, or to stay or shift back and forth between human, which would you prefer? Existing or fantastical? Uh, which would you be and why? I'd probably be a dragon. I love dragons. Dragons are cool. I have a statue of a dragon right next to my computer monitor. Dragons are neat. Oh, I gotta do it all over again. Oh, fantastic. I was just hoping I could. Just saying to myself, man, wouldn't it be great if I could redo this whole level? Is there another one up here? Alright, um... So, uh, and if I could have any animal as a pet or friend companion existing in a fantastic which would it be and why? Logan, my cat, because I love him. Uh, do I need something else? Is that, is that not a good enough answer? Uh, I think it's a good enough answer. Is there anyone up there? Doesn't look like it. What about from here? Let's get who I can from here. Alright, um... So! Uh... Let's see. Oh, oh, hang on. Whoops. I need to... I need to rest up, apparently. Alright, so, uh... Alex Denton... As you obviously love RPGs, but do you do, would, but do you prefer more linear and story-driven ones like Mass Effect and Baldur's Gate, or more sandbox open worlds like Fallout and Skyrim? And both is not an answer, but both has to be an answer because they're two completely different styles of games. Um, I like them both equally, and I'm sorry if that's not a good answer for you, but that's my answer. I like them both for very different reasons, I, about the same. If you if you said which do you like more, well. You know, I'm going to try and answer your question. If you ask me which game is better, Mass Effect or like a particular game, Mass Effect or Skyrim, I would say Mass Effect. But if you asked me if I was stuck on an island and I only had one game to play, what game would I like to play? It'd probably be Skyrim. So, I don't know if that really answers your question or not. Um, there we go. Ta-da! 
Wasn't there another guy that walked up those stairs? There was. I know there was. So, anyway, uh, Aaron Dedic 2, or Aaron Dedic asks, cats or dogs or both? Meh, both. I really have no preference, cats or dogs. They're all good, in my opinion. two shots off very nice all right um sparrowfish asks how did you and your girlfriend each other i guess find each other college community college we were both in a sociology class together and i eventually got the courage to talk to her and one thing led to another and voila it was fireworks like that except with a lot more begging and pleading on my part and less physical damage. <laughs>